please honor our speaker with a memento. Hello, good morning, seniors, teachers, and my colleagues. Today, my topic of discussion is congenital malformation in pediatric surgery. Though it is a very vast topic, but I have to concise in very small time. This is the list of common congenital anomalies. First of all, start with the esophageal atresia. This is the most, most important challenging anomaly. It is supposed to be one of the sub epitome of pediatric surgery. The first survival reported in 1940, but nowadays we are saying our nearly survival rate is more than 90%. Most common variety is upper pouch is blind and lower pouch is opening in the trachea is supposed to be type 3 almost con almost is occupy about more than 90 percent cases of esophageal atresia other more than five six other anomalies are also reported most of the patient present with the antenatal ultrasound in polyhydroamnios after birth the child present with respiratory distress as features of aspiration pneumonitis and we are not able to pass ng tube more than 10 to 11 centimeter from the lower lip with x-ray <coughs> by investigation we can get diagnosis of the just pass the ng tube and take the check as hh x-ray of chest and abdomen if ng tube is not going beyond more than 10 centimeter is suggestive of esophageal atresia if abdominal x-ray showing gas then it is suggestive of associated fistula and there is no gas in abdomen then it is suggestive of complete esophageal atresia this is the x-ray showing coil of endotube in the upper abdomen it is gasless abdomen suppose a pure esophageal atresia and abdomen full with the gas suggestive of tracheoesophageal fistula early management keep the patient in prone position to minimize the minimize the aspiration of the gastric content repeated suction start with the IV antibiotic and definitive management by either right thoracotomy with repair of esophagus and ligation of fistula in cases of pure atresia we go for the esophagostomy and gastrostomy congenital diaphragmatic hernia just I am giving the brief introduction I am not going in the detail of proper adequate management the congenital diaphragmatic hernia the one of the most challenging surgical anomaly but it's not a surgical emergency it's supposed to be medical emergency its incidence rate is nearly about 3000 to 4000 live birth one case in 3 to 4000 live birth with slightly female predominance most of the time is present on the left side about 85 to 90 percent occasionally bilateral and right side on the position in the diaphragm it can be classified posterior lateral a most common bogdalax hernia which occupies almost 90 percent of the cases Sometimes it can present as a hiatus hernia or passa esophageal hernia or retro sternal morgognis hernia. The clinical feature, child present with respiratory distress and cyanosis. Early the symptom and severe the prognosis. It can be tachypnea, tachycardia, cyanosis. Trachea and apex beat may be shifted. Diminished breath sound. Bowel sound can be heard in the chest. Abdominal picture is expired abdomen due to absence of bowel content. Chest X-ray will show the intestine coil in the <coughs> inside the chest cavity. Blood gas analysis suggestive of respiratory or metabolic acidosis. Antenatal ultrasound suggestive of polyhydramnios, chest mass, mediastinal shift, or gastric bevel. Early diagnosis is suggestive of poor prognosis. Again, any congenital anomalies earlier the diagnosis most of the time is poor prognosis most important thing to remember don't do bag and mask ventilation I always try to ventilate the patient by either intubation or nasal cannula oxygen keep the child warm evaluate the associated anomalies like 2d echo ultrasound abdomen to associated other anomalies Surgery is not an emergency. It's a medical emergency. Once the patient is stabilized, his ABG is improved, need minimal ventilatory shutting, then the patient to be operated. This is the X-ray showing bowel loops inside the chest cavity. Duodenal atresia. Come to the start with the GI tract. 
most common one of the atresia, intestinal atresia, incidence rate is almost 1 in 2500. Mostly patients are the premature because they are associated with polyhydroamnias, early rupture of membrane, because most of the, most of the amniotic fluid absorb in the proximal jejunum. Child present with recurrent bilious vomiting on day 1 2 of the life. Child come to us dehydrated, scuffed abdomen, which visual peristalsis from left to right. Plain x ray showing classical double bubble sign. Serum electrolyte may show hypochloremic alkalosis, hypokalemia, and hyponatremia. We have to do the echocardiography, renal ultrasound to evaluate or to rule out associated other congenital anomalies. Fetal ultrasonography may show again the double bubble shadow and polyhydroamnios. This is the X-ray showing double bubble sign. Management. You have to just give the supportive treatment, nilorly, nasogastric aspiration, IV fluid, and then once the patient is stabilized, plan for the definitive surgery, either is duodenal or nostrum. Intestinal malrotation and mid-gut valvulus. This is again a cause of duodenal obstruction. It's mostly occurs in 1 in 5,000 live births. About 40 to 60 percent of the patient present in the early neonatal period. It occurs because the normal process of rotation is arrested. The base of mesentery get narrow. The cecum lifted upward and the DJ junction come on the right side which create the narrow base which causing recurrent valvulus formation. Just this see the valvulus of the malrotation. Clinically present with the bilious emising, bilious emesis, irritability, abdomen is soft and scuffed abdomen but is square. <coughs> X-ray may so dilated duodenum with some air fluid level and lower abdomen is gasless a scanty amount of the gas. USD may show the whirlpool sign. This is uh, a cases showing some kind of ischemia occurs in the cases of midgut valvulus. Patient require early management. Symptomatic child should be managed immediately by once the correct the dehydration and electrolyte and go for the exploratory laparotomy with the correction of malrotation. Sometimes we have to or we have to place the large gut on the left side and a small gut on the right side. So we prefer to do appendicectomy at the time of surgery. Jejunal ileal atresia, it incidence is about 1 in 3000 live births. There is no significant sex difference. Etiology is not exactly known. Supposed to be one kind of ischemic event occurs in the late intrauterine life. Child presented with the bilious emesis, abdominal distension, jaundice, and failure to pass meconium or a scanty amount of the meconium, X-rays more so, air fluid levels, and contrast enema showing microcolon. This is the case of jejunal ileal atresia, the grossly dilated proximal segment and thin out narrow distal segment due to complete block. Management, we have to again put the patient, as like the any intestinal obstruction management, nilorly nasogastric aspiration, correct the dehydration, and electrolyte management and go for the exploratory laparotomy with end to back anastomosis. Om fellow seal. Its incidence rate in one about one in five four thousand live birth, slightly male predominance, and this is the second most common abdominal wall defect. It's not the most common ab abdominal wall defect. Antenatal ultrasound can diagnose the om fellow seal. In almost 75% of the cases, early detection can be done even at the 18 week of the life. This is the picture of huge omphalo seal. One is important thing, it can be delivered, delivered vaginally. It is not mandatory to do the caesarean section for the all kind of omphalo seal, until unless it is not size more than 5 cm. If, the, there is <coughs> if there is respiratory difficulty, you can put the patient on mechanical ventilation. Otherwise, put the rice tube, correct the dehydration. These patients may require almost 30 to 40 percent more IV fluid than usual requirement. Surgical management to be done after resuscitation. A small defect can be closed primarily, but for larger defect, 
you may read, need some kind of silo placement or mesh placement or delayed repair. This is the picture of silo placement, just covering the whole abnormal intestine in, a, in the polythene, sterile polythene cover to avoid dehydration. Gastroschisis, this is a defect on the right side of the abdominal wall and this is the most common abdominal wall defect with a slightly male predominance. Antenatal diagnosis can be done by the ultrasound with sensitivity supposed to be about 83%. This is the picture showing grossly gastroschisis, showing all bowel outside the abdomen. This surgery to be done immediately. Once the child delivered, can be vaginal, it, the vaginal delivery can be again possible. Patient just keep the bowel in the warm, saline, moist and sterile dressing. After resuscitation, immediately step to the operation room and do early surgery earlier the surgery better the result once there is some bowel edema developed it difficult to accommodate the bowel inside the abdominal cavity again the husprung disease this is a congenital megacolon disorder characterized by absence of ganglion cells in circular and longitudinal muscle layer which incidence in one in five thousand live birth it can be short segment husprung disease long segment husprung disease or ultra short segment disease this is the picture showing transition dilator proximal zone. This is a transition zone and this is the narrow aganglionic segment. Child present with abdominal distension, failure to pass meconium and PR examination, the stool with gush of the air suggestive of enterocolitis. Late cases may present with the bilious vomiting and failure to thrive. By investigation, plain X-ray abdomen is showing dilated proximal colon with absence of gas shadow in the pelvic colon. Barrier in mass shows the transition zone in between the dilated proximal colon and a small caliber distal colon. Rectal diameter is same or smaller than the sigmoid colon suggest of Hirschsprung disease. This is the barium enema picture showing dilated proximal segment and contracted distal segment. This is the egg ganglion. treatment keep the child nilorally IV fluid nasogastric decompression rectal, irrig rectal irrigation is only severe enterocolitis which don't do barium enema within 48 hours of rectal wash otherwise you can miss the transition zone first do the colostomy and take the biopsy then definitive repair to be done on the later on Imperforate anus, incidence is about 1 in 5,000 live birth, most common in females in rectovestibular fistula in male child, rectoidestral fistula, slightly male predominance. On clinical examination, if there is a perineal staining, there is a perineal fistula in vestibule, there is a vestibular fistula, and if per meter meters is suggestive of rectoidestral fistula or rectovagical fistula. If there is a single perineum opening is suggestive of cloaca, no meconium is staining, Plan for the prone cross table lateral exit after 24 hours of birth and plan for the surgery after investigation to rule out vector anomalies. Treatment is either colostomy followed by definitive repair if needed in the two stage procedure. This is the x ray showing low type anomaly. It can be managed by the limited PSHRP or anoplasty alone. And this is the high type anorectal malformation required colostomy followed by definitive repair and further the colostomy closure later on. Posterior urethral wall. This is the commonest urinary obstruction anomaly in urethral obstruction anomaly is present in the early age of the life. Again the early presentation poor the prognosis incidence rate is 1 in 8000 live birth. Patient present with the palpable distended bladder without palpable kidney. Even the empty bladder is palpable in posterior urethral wall. You put the infant feeding tube, drain the whole, whole of the bladder, but again bladder remain palpable. May child present with the urosepsis or urinary ascites. 